Merong ibang mga nagsasabi, kinakabahan daw sila kasi parang kabado daw yung mga abogado or yung abogado ni BBM. Ay, bago nagumpisa yung hearing ay naging issue at nagkaroon ng konting intayan ang komisyon dahil wala po ang respondent, wala po si BBM. So, hindi po nadidiscuss ng ibang nagkukomentaryo pa dito kung ano yung significance nito. This is very significant kasi dun sa rules of court, kapag hindi dumating yung isang partido sa preliminary conference, mahalaga po kasi ang preliminary conference, lalong-lalo na yung abogado pag hindi dumating, well, uh, hahanapin ng hukuman yan. And in this case, hinanap nga ng COMELEC. Because if you are a party to the case at hindi ka dumating, it's possible that you will become either defaulted or non-suited. Kung ikaw ang petitioner at hindi ko dumating non-suited, so madi-dismiss yung kaso. That's just the simplest way of explaining it. Or, kung ikaw naman ang respondent, hindi ka nabibigyan ng pagkakataon sumagot o magpresenta ng ebidensya dahil madi-default ka na. Okay. Yun po ang ibig sabihin nun. Kaya mahalaga po yung determination earlier on kung bakit wala si BBM. So as it turns out, in-explain naman ni Attorney Hana na yung uh, na hindi dumating si BBM is because he... in isolation dahil siya ay na-expose sa dalawang tao na nag-test positive for COVID. Among them, his spokesman, attorney Vic Rodriguez, at yung kanyang security. Pareho po sila nag-positive so he had to go into isolation. Dahil hindi siya maipakita sa Zoom, hinanap siya talaga ni Cobb Guanzon kung pwede daw kahit magpakita siya doon sa ano sa Zoom, uh, tatanggapin na niya yun. Hindi na siya ma-default ma or anything like that. Pero instead, they submitted a medical certificate to justify kung bakit kahit sa Zoom hindi siya pwede. And in this case, mukhang on its face, tinanggap naman ni Kong Guanzon yung medical certificate which was sent electronically. Okay? Oy, wag niya nang awayan si Mr. Ano, uh, Solatorio. I don't think that he expected that anything here would be ano, approaching the level of objectivity that he is used to dun sa kabila. Okay. Sabi ni Mary Ann Salvner, ay, nagpadala siya ng super sticker. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Mary Ann. Okay. So, uh, doon sa stipulation sa fact, medyo mahaba ito. Although, maraming instances na napagalitan ni Kong Guanzon yung mga lawyers. And let's deal with that one first. Anong nangyayari during a stipulation of facts? Sa so, stipulation of facts, yung isang party, mag-uumpisa yan doon sa petitioner, sabi ng petitioner, okay, can we stipulate that... Uh, Respondent was convicted in the regional trial court. Yun yung first stipulation nila. Agree. Sabi, sabi nung una, nag-hesitate to yung ano, uh, counsel for the respondent. Pero ultimately, inadmit na naman nila yung conviction at the regional trial court. Um, nung una kasi, nung nag-hesitate si respondent, napagalitan ni Kong Guanzon. Later on, si yung attorney for petitioner Akbayan. Sabi niya, ayaw na ayaw daw niya yung pagka yung isang lawyer ay nagkakritisize sa ibang lawyer. Kasi parang uh, nag a yung counsel ng Akbayan na, eh, ganito naman yun eh. Bakit hindi pa kayo umamin? Parang ganon. Ganito kasi pag sa stipulation of facts, sasabihin lang ng isang partido, o oh, ito yung ano, for stipulation, pwede lang sabihin, ang sasabihin lang ng respondent, uh, we will admit that fact or we will uh, not admit that fact. Pag not admitted, kailangan pa nilang patunayan. Pag admitted, no need na patunayan. Usually, mag admit yung parehong party dun sa isang stipulation of fact if it works in their favor. O, kasi pag uh, it doesn't really work in their favor, bibigay mo yung burden dun sa party na but patunayan muna nila yung fact na yun bago nila i-argue na mayroong offense dito. Okay? So, eto. Uh, so, uh, yung isang stipulation was, uh, ano yung first stipulation yan? Normally ito sa ano, preliminary conference. The first stipulation pertains to jurisdiction. So, uh, sinasabi ng petitioner, we admit the jurisdiction of the COMELEC. So, in this case, lahat naman aminado. So, sinabi ng respondent, we admit the jurisdiction of the COMELEC. Wala namang ibang ahensya or hukuman na may jurisdiction dito. 
Dati kasi kapag merong, ano, uh, it depends on the stage of the election, uh, kapag uh, be, below a certain level, halimbawa barangay, hindi po yan sa COMELEC necessarily ililitis kung hindi sa MTC or sa RTC. So, uh, in this case, there is no issue on jurisdiction. So, pumayag yung lahat ng partido na may jurisdiction ng COMELEC, not only over the persons, the parties themselves, but also over the issue na inaharap nila at pinapalitis doon sa ating COMELEC. Yung sa second, uh, ang stipulation ng kabila was uh, Oops, meron ako na skip Ayan, uh, if BBM ah, Ang stipulation ng kabila for, uh, second was Whether or not was that BBM was vice governor from 1982 to 1983 admitted naman the next stipulation was what was uh, BBM was governor from 1983 to 1986 admitted naman yon so do naman sa ano uh, nag-stipulate din yung kabila yung party for Akbayan yung uh, sorry yung council for Akbayan ang sabi that BBM did not resign as governor hindi yan ina-admit ng council for BBM the next stipulation was whether or not BBM was guilty beyond reasonable doubt of violation of the NIRC for failure to file his RT, uh, ITR uh, dito dininay po ng ano ni Initially, dininay ng counsel for respondent ito, but nung kinlarify ito at sinabi ni Com Guanson, they're just ano, stipulating on the RTC. So, o oh, sige, um, pwede namang hindi tanggapin or pwedeng tanggapin. In this case, tinanggap naman yung conviction at the regional trial court because that is not an admission that there is conviction by final judgment. Okay. Ang very significant dito ang conviction by final judgment kasi yung pagpapataw ng penalty mangyayari lang kapag pinal na yung desisyon ng hukuman. So, uh, the next stipulation was whether or not he was convicted and ano, for failure to pay income taxes. Uh, ang sabi ng counsel for respondent, we admit, but we stipulate that he had appealed. So, ang sinasabi ni Kong Guanson, all right, it's admitted, but you can stipulate later on about what happened in the Court of Appeals. So, uh, next, um, the pinapastipulate ng petitioner na nag, ano, na kasama dun sa sentensya niya ay imprisonment of three years. So, sabi ng respondent, hindi namin iya-admit yan. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan ng patunayan yung fact na yon ng mga abogado for the petitioner. So, maraming salamat kay Arafat Pukaan para dun sa iyong ano, super chat.